and also to our panelists joining us tonight. My name is Janabelle Jackson-Stewart, and I am the new coordinator for the Elevating Excellence District Initiative. And joining me tonight, we have Ms. Valerie Santos, K-12 Student Services Specialist. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm very grateful for the representatives from all the universities that are assisting us with our students, especially this year's seniors, as they embark on you know this college admissions process. Um, at Pinellas County Schools, I'm so glad that we have a program such as Elevating Excellence so that our students have the opportunity to attend um, different, different events and different seminars to really help them and, and, and achieve the best that they can achieve. We, I, I'm sorry. I want to make sure you know that we will be recording tonight. If you miss anything, don't worry about taking notes. It will be posted later on for your view. Thank you, Valerie. Um, so tonight we will be, Valerie will, will be monitoring the chat, the live chat, and I will be um, directing traffic here in the studio. Um, tonight you will have the opportunity to hear from our panelists um, information on college admissions process, and you will also have the opportunity to ask your specific questions when we open the Q&A. I will begin by introducing our representatives, and once I introduce them, they will have um, a few minutes to um, give you information on their admissions process. Once we um, go through all of the panelists tonight, then we will open the Q&A session. So without further ado, let's begin. So tonight we will begin with Eckerd College, and we have Ms. Jenny Connor. Hi, everyone. Um, like she said, my name is Jenny Connor, and I work at Eckerd College, which is here in St. Petersburg, Florida, just south of where we are right now. Um, if you don't know about Eckerd, Eckerd is a small liberal arts and sciences school. So we have about 1,900 students. Um, who live on our 188-acre campus in South St. Pete. Um, about 90% of those students are living on campus full-time for all four years, so we have a very active, engaged um, campus community. And 80% of our total student population comes from outside the state of Florida, whereas 20% comes from Florida. So that's all across the state, from Miami to the Panhandle to Tampa Bay as well. Um, so what I always like to tell my Florida students, if you're looking to stay close to home, utilize some of that Florida aid like Bright futures and prepaid, but kind of want an out-of-state Florida experience, we might be a really good option for you um, because we do have people coming from 49 different states as well as 40 different countries to study with us. Our most popular majors are marine science, environmental studies, psychology, business, and animal studies, but we do have 40 different academic programs as well as 50 minors and a few pre-professional programs to choose from as well. Um, we also have really extensive study abroad options for those who are interested in that. 70% of our students will study abroad at least once, uh, many multiple times, and we really encourage them to take their education global if that's something they're interested in. Um, to talk a little bit about our application process at Eckerd, we have early action in rolling admission. Um, both applications will open up on October, I'm sorry, August 1st, uh, so just in a few days, and we will accept the Eckerd College app that's specific to us, but also um, the common application as well. Um, we are test optional for the next two years in continuation of you know observing the testing challenges through the pandemic, so for rising juniors and seniors, um, it's not required to submit test scores if you don't want to. Um, in addition to the application, you'll also have to submit your transcripts as well as a letter of recommendation from an academic source, um, and if you wanted be test optional, some information to help you decide if that's a good choice for you. The average applicant at Eckerd has a 3.45 unweighted GPA. Uh, we do add weight for AP, IB, and ACE coursework up to a 4.0. And then the average student who has test scores submitted has a 26 ACT or a 1200 SAT, and we will allow for super scoring. So you can submit as many test scores as you'd like, and we'll use um, the best composite for application in um, review. Uh, something that I love that we do in our admissions process is when you submit that application to the college, it's also going to serve as your application for academic aid. So you only have to submit one application, remember that one deadline, um, and if you're admitted and eligible for academic aid, we're going to let you know with your acceptance letter. Um, those will range from twelve dollars to $22,000 per year for your time at Eckerd. 
Um, we have a very engaged community, like I said, a ton of different sports as well as um, student groups and organizations. And so we'd love for you to come and explore Eckerd College. We are open for limited tours right now with safety precautions in place because of the pandemic. Um, so if you'd like to come visit, you can go to our website and either schedule an in-person or virtual tour. Um, but yeah, that's Eckerd in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Um, we're going to move on to USF with Mr. Kaysen Watson. Hey, everyone. My name is uh, Kaysen Watson. I'm a missions counselor at um, USF. I'm actually housed on the St. Petersburg campus, but I'm representing the entire USF system. Um, one of the new things, or not necessarily new, but um, things that we're doing moving forward with the application process is when you were applying to USF, you were applying to the USF system. So as a student, you have the same admission requirements across the board for all of our campuses. So you're submitting an application for to be a USF student, and you can attend classes at whatever campus um, your classes are available. You would have to pick a home campus, but once again, you would be able to, uh, to attend classes at whatever campus they are available. USF um, has what's called a merit-based evaluation system. So what that means is that we're only looking at a couple things when you apply. So um, we're looking at the application. Obviously, you can do the, um, the Common App, the Coalition App, or the application that we have on the USF um, app, uh, website. Um, we also are going to reevaluate your GPA. We're going to do what's called a recalculated GPA. So what that means is that we're going to um, look at your, your when you send us a high school transcript, we're going to look at that based on your core academic courses. So we're looking at your math, your English, your social sciences, your natural sciences, and two years of foreign language. Um, for example, if you're taking something like weight training, you're probably in way better shape than I am. Um, but we're not going to use that in the calculation towards uh, the GPA evaluation. We're looking at your core uh, academic courses. Um, so. Uh, if you're taking honors classes, an extra half point of weight, because we will weight the GPA based on those standards as well. Um, AP, IB, dual enrollment, and ACE Cambridge as an extra full point of weight. Um, we also look at your... Um, your SAT or ACT scores, we don't have a preference between one or the other. And as a state institution, um, that's something that we we do also require the um, SAT or ACT, um, but we do super score. So um, if you're looking to um, take a like take a look at USF, I would encourage you to um, look on our website. And also, we are open for campus tours on all three of our campuses. I think one of the great things about the USF system is that you have the ability to kind of have, if you want to do that big like you know, um, like college feel, you can actually go to the Tampa campus, is our largest campus, and then you can go all the way down to uh, Sarasota Manatee campus, which is essentially like a one building campus. So you have the ability to kind of like have the big college feel, or like you know more of a community um, uh, college feel. And um, in USF uh, Sarasota and USF Tampa, smaller class sizes. All of our class sizes are small. USF Tampa has that big college feel. We have D1 sports, we have football games, and you can experience. All of that as a USF student, so you have the ability to, you know, attend football games if you're a St. Pete or Sarasota student. Um, so you have the best of all worlds at USF. And if you have any questions about the process, um, you can always visit our website and or uh, contact the admissions office, admissions at usf.edu. Thank you. Thank you, Kaysen. Um, as we proceed, now we're moving on to our panelists that are um, on the virtual link. I also would like to um, encourage our participants to go ahead and start typing your questions in the chat. You can direct them to a school in particular, or you can just direct them to all panelists. But we are moving on. So the next um, school up is Vanderbilt, and it will be Sabrina Paxton. Hi guys, thank you so much for having me. Hopefully everyone can see and hear me. Um, just so you guys know, I think I am one of the few non-Florida schools here today. So uh, Vanderbilt is um, located in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, right kind of in the heart of the city. We are a private liberal arts school and we do have students coming from all over the country and all over the world. In fact, we do have around 11% international student population. Um, but Florida is one of our bigger states. So if you wanna get out of the state but still have people um, from your hometown, definitely check us out. At Vanderbilt, we do use a holistic process when it comes to our application, and this is definitely not unique to Vanderbilt. You'll hear a lot of schools say that, but what that really means is that we want to take all parts of your application, put them together to really kind of see you as a whole person and as a whole student. So we'll look at kind of five main things. We do take into account your academic achievements. This is your grades and your transcript, but it's also the rigor of your curriculum. Um, so if you have um, AP available at your school, IB, ACE curriculum, whatever is open and available at your school, we would like to see you taking those classes and challenging yourself um, while also hopefully getting good grades in those classes. Um, we also will accept test scores if you want to send them. You can send um, uh, SAT or ACT, but we are going test optional for this upcoming year. Um, with the COVID pandemic, we went test optional last year and we are continuing this again this next year. So 
completely up to you guys if you think it will help out your application. And if you're proud of your scores, feel free to send them in. Um, but definitely it will not hurt your application if you do not send in test scores. The next thing that we will look at are letters of recommendation. We do require three. We need two from teachers, preferably in your junior or senior year, although I know COVID has kind of made that a little more difficult because maybe you had online classes and didn't get to know your professors as well. But that's kind of what we would hope to see um, just because they are the most recent teachers and can maybe speak to who you are in the classroom. Um, and then also from some of your core curriculum classes. And then we also need a letter um, of recommendation from your counselor. Um, and if you're worried that maybe you go to a larger school, you don't know your counselor as well, that's totally fine. Um, sometimes those letters are just a lot more of information about your school and helping us get a lot more context of your class. If you would like to send more than those three letters, you're more than welcome to do so. A lot of times people will send in letters from their coach or from a church mentor or something like that. Um, my best piece of advice there is just make sure it's really adding to your application and not five teachers saying the same thing about you over and over again. Uh, but you are more than welcome to send in more than the required three. The next thing that we look at is your personal essay. And this is kind of where you get to put that personal touch on your application, where you get to share a story um, or whatever you want to write about and let um, the uh, admissions officer know a little bit more about yourself and your journey. And that's always our favorite part of the application to read because it really is where we get to see a lot more of um, kind of the exciting personal side of you outside of just numbers and test scores and things like that. And then the last thing that we will consider in this holistic review is your extracurriculars and your leadership activities. Um, we know that you don't have to be a leader to make an impact in a group. We just want to see ways that you've made change in your um, community or things that you're passionate about, which will really help us see what you'll be involved in when you come to campus and what kind of new and exciting ideas you can bring when we're shaping our class. Uh, just so you guys know, we do take the Common app, we take the Coalition app, and then we also will take the QuestBridge app does not matter to us whichever ones you want to um, apply through. They're all the same in our process. And then we do have three different ways to apply. You can apply um, early decision. We have two rounds of early decision. So early decision round one, you'll apply by November 1st. So kind of the typical early decision date. You'll hear back by mid-December. So nice and early, you can know before going into your holiday break where you're going to school. Um, but early decision is binding for both rounds of our early decision. So that's definitely something to take into account. We don't have kind of that early action um, non-binding process. And then, like I mentioned, we do have an, a second early decision round where you'll apply by January 1st. Maybe you didn't know by that number, November 1st deadline kind of where exactly you wanted to commit to. But if you have your mind made up by January, you can apply uh, through that early decision round two round and you'll hear back by mid-February. Or you can choose to apply regular decision, which is totally normal, non-binding. The deadline still is January 1st, but you will hear back by mid to late March. And I just wanted to mention really quick, um, we do have three big full tuition scholarships that we offer at Vanderbilt. And if you are interested in applying for those, they do require an application. And you do have to get your Vanderbilt, your general Vanderbilt application turned in um, by December 1st to be able to apply for those scholarships. So if that's something that you're interested in, just kind of keep an eye out um, for those deadlines. Um, so you will have the time to be able to fill out your scholarship deadlines and your scholarship applications. But if you guys have any questions, I am the Florida rep for Vanderbilt. I'll be around um, via email. Uh, you always can call up the office and I'd be happy to help answer any questions. Um, if anyone is in the area around Nashville, we are opening up our campus for, currently we have self-guided tours and we're hoping to bring back student-led tours um, come this fall. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, moving on, we're gonna go to New College of Florida with Ms. Sharon Alcock. Hello, everybody. I'm Sharon Alcock, um, Associate Director for New Student Recruitment at New College of Florida. New College of Florida is, mm -hmm. a, is Florida's public honors college. We are part of the state university system and we're located in beautiful Sarasota, which is about an hour south of Tampa. Uh, we're actually right next door to the USF Sarasota Manatee campus, um, right next to the Ringling Museum of Art. We are considered a liberal arts and science college. Uh, we have about 45 different majors. 
um, in the in different hum, um, departments and divisions uh, such as hum, humanities, natural sciences, social sciences. We do have uh, pre-law, pre-med, and we do have professional certificates um, in Bloomberg Finances, GIS, um, and several others. We are also, um, which is something new uh, from this year, we are hand in hand going with our career office, our CEO, Center for Engagement of Opportunity, with our academic students at New College of Florida will on day one, not only have an academic advisor, but will have a career mentor throughout their time at New College of Florida. We want you to get the jobs that you're looking for. We want to prepare you for those jobs. We also want to prepare you if you want to go on to graduate school or if you want to go to medical school or law school for PhDs, you will be ready. Our um, academic um, environment is very flexible. We have a contract system, which means that students sit down with their academic advisor. Not only do they go over what classes they're going to take, but they're going to go over your, your goals, your short-term goals and your long-term goals. What do you want to achieve semester by semester? What do you want to achieve by the end of your four years? Um, you will be in small classes. Um, we are just under 800 students total. So think about that. Uh, it's a very small, intimate environment. Our class sizes are about 12 students on average. Um, all classes are taught by our professors. All professors are our academic advisors. So you're getting a very personalized experience, um, but at a state college cost. So in-state tuition, if you're from Florida, you can use Bright Futures, you can use Florida prepaid. We will also give you scholarship. So it's a quite economical um, and it's the honors college for the state of Florida. We're very proud of our rankings. Um, and, in, and especially in the natural sciences, we rank very highly for students who go on to master's programs and PhDs, um, as well as students who go for different um, Fulbright scholars and different scholarships throughout their time at New College. You're also allowed, and of course, we encourage you to study abroad, um, spend uh, a semester or two overseas or you can study within the National Student Exchange. So if you wanna study, say a semester in California, you can do that. You would pay new college tuition um, and the room and board of the college you're going to. There's a list about, about 200 students, uh, 200 colleges around the country where you can go on exchange. So we've had students go to Alaska. We've had students go to New York. Uh, it's a way to kind of get a taste of another campus, see what it's like, and then you come back to, to beautiful Sarasota. Um, our application process uh, is very simple. We're on the common application, or you can also use the New College of Florida application. There is no application fee. Um, we'll obviously we'll ask for your official high school transcript. Um, we do require test scores since we're part of the state university system, um, and we do require an essay. Uh, it's rolling admissions, so start I, my advice to all of you is to start as early as you can. August 1st is when the Common App opens because um, senior year can get very hectic. Um, so the earlier you do your applications, um, the better. Uh, we have a very vibrant student life uh, on campus. We do, it is a residential campus and 80% of our students live on campus. Um, we have, since we're out around in the water, as you can see, we have a boathouse. Um, we have a brand new dock that we just built where you can use our sailing equipment, paddle boards, kayaks. We'll teach you how to sail. Um, we do have a crew team um, that they, um, they compete at Nathan Benerson, the world renowned uh, rowing facility right here in Sarasota. We also have lots of different clubs on campus, music, um, theater, arts, um, all different science related as well. Uh, so there's, there's a lot to do here um, on, on New College's campus. All, all campus visits are, are open now, so please come visit us. Um, we'll show you around, uh, we'll show you all the, the dorms, we'll show you the residents, uh, all the housing and the student uh, Hamilton House where we have our student union. Um, and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you, Sharon. And we are going to head up to Tallahassee with Ms. Quiana Levant and FAMU. 
Hi, good evening, everyone. My name again is Quiana Levant, and I am so, so excited to be here with you all this evening to tell you about our beautiful, beautiful university. Um, as stated already, we are located in Tallahassee, Florida, which is the capital of Florida. And I'm gonna give you some quick facts about our university, um, some of our top majors, some points of pride, um, about some scholarship and financial aid opportunities. And of course, I will also give you that information about our admissions process. So first off, I do want to let you all know um, that we do have 98 degree offerings, and that is between our undergraduate degrees, masters, as well as doctoral degrees. Now, for those students that are thinking about our undergraduate degrees, we do have 56 different options that you can choose from. So you will definitely find a place here at our institution. Um, on a yearly basis, we have around 10,000 students on our campus, but that is not anything to get freaked out about or scared about because our classroom sizes are very, very small. You will find 25 students to one instructor, so you can still get that personal feel and build that personal relationship with all of your professors, but you still also have that opportunity for network with so many students on our campus. Um, we are the rattlesnake, that's our mascot, and our colors are orange and green. And we are also a part of the state you know, um, state system, so we are a public institution and we are a historically black college um, slash university, so we are an HBCU, so that's another one of our points of pride. Um, we have been named the number one public HBCU in the world for two years in a row, 2020 as well as 2021, so you always want to make sure that you're choosing the top choice. Um, we are number two amongst Florida's engineering programs, so if you are interested in engineering, this is definitely a school that should be on your radar. I say that because our engineering program is so large. We have a great, great partnership with Florida State University where our students do take courses on their campus and it does count towards their graduation at FAMU and it is already paid for in your tuition and their students also do take courses on our campus as well. And that just widens your network even more, which is so beneficial for your future. We are number one amongst HBCUs for research and development. So if that is something that you're interested in, please take that into account. Some of our other top majors are biology, criminal justice, allied health, as well as business. We currently have students that work at Google, Converse, Nike, Deloitte, you name it, we have students there and they are doing some really, really amazing things. Um, I'm sure that some of you have heard of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm not sure if we have any schools from that area here, but um, the mayor of Atlanta, Georgia, Keisha Lance Bottoms, did attend FAMU. We have a lot of great other individuals that did, such as Keisha Cole, um, Common. We have uh, the Microsoft. We have individuals at Microsoft as well. Um, one of the CEOs and chairman of Microsoft did graduate from FAMU as well. So moving on to some of our scholarships and financial aid opportunities, that's super duper important. And we always wanna give students an opportunity to alleviate some of that stress that may fall on them or their family. So we do offer merit-based scholarships at FAMU. Um, for those of you that don't know what your merit is, your merit is solely based on your performance, your academic performance. We're looking at that and it's so important and we want to reward you for that. So we do offer merit-based scholarships between $2,000 to $10,000, really great opportunities. So for any students that are interested in attending FAMU or if it's just on your list, we do ask that you go ahead and get your application in as soon as possible because the deadline for our merit-based scholarships is going to be October 30th of this year. And that date is coming super duper fast. So please keep that in mind, $2,000 to $10,000 a year. Um, we do offer need-based scholarships as well, um, between six fifty dollars to around $7,000, so that's a great opportunity. And we do offer departmental scholarships as well, so if you do want to major in the School of Business, you can receive a scholarship just for that. Environmental science, music, architecture, the list kind of goes on, but all of that information is also provided on our website. So getting to the most important thing that you're going to learn here is our admissions requirements. So in order to get into FAMU, you will have to apply at FAMU.edu. We are not on any of the other application websites. Um, so you will physically have to type in www.famu.edu to put in an application for Florida A&M. The minimum GPA that you have to have is a 3.0 GPA weighted score. Um, you do have to have academic units of 18. So those 18 academic units consist of 
English, four. You have to have four English. Four maths, three natural sciences, three social sciences, two foreign languages with an additional academic core units of two. Does not matter what those courses are, just additional academic core units of two. Now, if you already know what you want to major in and you are sure that that is something that you want to stick with, then you may want to pick those courses that align with that major. Um, but we have that on our website as well. We kind of go ahead and prepare those high school students on what courses they need to be taking while they're in high school to prepare them for the courses at FAMU. Now, as you all know, in the state of Florida, we are not test optional. We are not test optional for public institutions. Therefore, you will have to take the SAT or the ACT in order to get into Florida A&M. Now, if you take the SAT, we are looking at specific scores within those different subjects. So for math, you will need to have a 26. Reading, 27. Language, 27. And that's for the SAT. If you take the ACT, we are looking for a math 22, a reading 22, and an English 19. Again, we are not test optional, but we do super score. So if you do need to take the SAT twice or three times, we will take the highest score from each one of those tests. Same for the ACT, so keep that in mind. There is a 500 word essay associated with our application as well as two letters of recommendation. Those letters of recommendation can come from a teacher, a counselor, it can come from a pastor, it can come from someone you did community service with, but we do need those two letters of recommendation. A great thing that we have going at our institution is when it comes to your high school transcripts, you can self-report those initially mm -hmm. just to get your um, application in and get the, you know get a chance to let us know who you are and how you're performing and then you can send your official transcript when it gets closer to you graduating of course there is a $35 application fee but of course your counselors always have fee waivers so please ask them for fee waivers and they are usually first come first serve so just keep that in mind as well and some of our deadlines that you need to look out for so if you are interested in the fall which would be August then we would need all of this information in by May 1st if you're interested in spring, which is usually January, then we would need all of this by November 1st. And if you are interested in the summer, we would need all of this information by March 1st. But again, remember that deadline in order to qualify for any of our merit-based scholarships, we would need your application, only the application. That's all you have to submit. We would need that by October 30th of your senior year, which is very fastly approaching. So please, please, please get your applications in. I will leave my contact and I will be here for the remainder. So if you all have any specific questions about any of our majors, any of our offerings, any of our resources that we have on campus, because we have so many, I am here to answer all of those questions for you. Thank you. Thank you, Kiana. Moving on, we're going to University of West Florida with Anne-Marie Barker. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for uh, being here. I'm super happy to be here and tell you guys all about the University of West Florida. So we are located in the beautiful city of Pensacola, Florida. That's is going to be as far west on the Florida panhandle that you can possibly get. We're home to one of the most world's uh, most beautiful beaches, um, uh, beautiful white sand, emerald waters. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, we are a medium sized campus. We have about 13,000 students. That includes our undergraduate as well as our graduate students, um, which means for uh, very small class sizes. Our average freshman class class size is going to be about 25 students. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to make friends, uh, form peer groups and study groups, but also to get to get to know your professors. Um, you'll to be able to essentially help you achieve any of your academic as well as your professional goals. Um, and those class sizes are going to get smaller as you continue. I'm actually a UWF alum. Um, I graduated in 2019 with my degree in psychology and professional education. And um, I believe my final capstone class was, um, I believe like 12 students. So uh, we really got to know each other, which obviously, you know, kind of helped around that uh, college experience. We do have over 70 academic degree programs with over 60 plus minors. Um, so you're really gonna be able to gear um, your education to really whatever you want to do. Um, some of our most popular uh, majors are going to be our College of Nursing, Biomedical Sciences, that's gonna be our pre-med. So anything, you know, if you wanna go into dentistry or veterinary or PT or anything like that, that's gonna be that route. Um, marine Biology, um, that is uh, very, very popular for us because we have um, our location allows us to be close to freshwater as well as saltwater sources. So uh, they're always going out to the beach, collecting samples and, you know, doing all that fun lab science -y stuff with that, um, as well as cybersecurity and psychology. 
Um, so a little bit of aside from academics, we do have over 150 uh, different student organizations and growing. Um, this includes anything in regards to politically affiliated, religiously affiliated, intramural sports, um, as well as Greek life. Um, getting involved in campus and uh, really kind of finding your people is really going to be the best way for students to get that overall um, a really fantastic um, college experience. Um, we do have um, we do have 15 uh, varsity teams and then we also have um, our intramural sports as well so you can participate in sports you know through a couple of different routes. Um, we are the current reigning national champs uh, for the NCAA we are a D2 school. Um, we uh, that is from 2019 because 2020 kind of messed up football season for some people so uh, we are currently still the reigning champs so that was super exciting. Um, but one of the big things that we're really known for is going to be um, our high impact practices. So um, it's just a way to basically, uh, we want you to get out of the classroom while learning what you're going to be doing, whether that is through field work, internships, um, undergraduate research. Uh, we really want you to be able to get that experience portion of your resume to have lots and lots of bullet points, essentially. Um, we know that a lot of students are, you know, of course, getting their education, but we want you to stand out through your experience while getting your education. Um, it's really gonna make you a top competitor for any type of graduate school, um, upper level medical school, as, and also for, um, for jobs, of course. And so um, getting into the application process, our application is going to um, open up the first week of August. I believe it's August 1st, but I think that's a Sunday, so it might, you know, pop up um, on Monday um, to complete your transcript. I mean, I'm so sorry, to complete your application, we will just need your official high school transcript, your ACT or SAT test scores, um, like a few other panelists have said, um, being a part of the Florida University, uh, the State University system for Florida, we um, are not test optional. So you will need to submit at least one or um, one set of ACT scores or one set of SAT in order to complete your application, along with a $30 application fee or a fee waiver. Um, those fee waivers um, can be through the ACT, SAT, the NACAC, or if you qualify for free or reduced lunch, um, we just need to let um, your counselor just needs to let us know and we can um, get you a fee waiver that way. Um, excuse me, so that will complete your application. Um, the really big deadline for this is going to be December 1st. So if your application is finished by December 1st, um, meaning we have all of the documents that we need, you will automatically be considered to be awarded one of our academic merit scholarships. Um, this past year, they ranged anywhere from $6,000 to $20,000 in total. So um, just simply applying to the university, having everything done by that uh, priority deadline of December 1st, you'll automatically be considered. There's no other separate application. So definitely to try to get everything in by that deadline. Um, our average uh, freshman, um, 2020 uh, class was, um, their average GPA was about a 3.9, um, a 25 ACT composite and an 1190 SAT combined. Um, we are hosting in-person tours, um, so definitely feel free to check us out. Um, you'll be able to see some of our facilities. Um, you can stop by um, our Argo Central office. You know where the end all be all is of everything for admissions, registrar, things like that, everything to help you along with your application and all the processes. You also get to see some of our residence halls and some of our sport, health and leisure facilities, things like that. So um, it's a really a beautiful campus, um, lots of trails, uh, lots of things to do. And so definitely come and check us out. And I believe that is it for me. Um, I'm always available by email. Um, so if you ever have any questions or anything like that, definitely feel free to contact me and I'm happy to help in any way I can. Thank, Thank you, you. Anne-Marie. Next up, we're gonna have UCF, University of Central Florida with um, Ms. Kenna Machado. Hi, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you. So my name is Kiana Machado, one of the Senior Assistant Directors for Undergraduate Admissions at the University of Central Florida here in Orlando, Florida, so not too far away from Pinellas County. Now, UCF is one of the largest universities in the nation, the largest here in the state of Florida. We do currently have about 72,000 students. But that size has allowed us as an institution to provide opportunities to our UCF students. So these range from majors and careers to student life, clubs and organizations. 
As far as majors, we do offer over 200 degree programs. They range from the sciences, humanities, performing arts. If you can name it, we probably have it for you. But if not, definitely have a way to get you into that career path. Now, as far as student life, we offer over 650 clubs and organizations. These range from social to academic to honor societies. Some examples of the ones that we have, we have a chocolate lovers club, we have a napping club, we have Quidditch and Harry Potter, we have club sports. So many opportunities to get you involved and engaged with our campus community. Now we're also a large research institution and we have over $200 million available in research funding. So this is of interest to you. You can connect with our Office of Undergraduate Research as a student to get involved with different opportunities that are available here at the university. And though we do have a large student body size, we're still able to maintain an average class size of just about 28 students. We're also um, a very proud, diverse institution. About one in four of our UCF Knights is the first in their families to attend a college or university. And over 45% of our student body does identify as an ethnic minority. Now, as far as on-campus housing, it is not a requirement for any of our UCF students to live on campus, but definitely encouraged. We do have over 11 on-campus neighborhoods that you can choose from and over 20 learning communities. That's where we house students together based upon areas of interest, majors, or minors. Some of the communities that we have right now, we have one um, for lead scholar students, is a leadership-based organization on campus. We have one Honors College, we have a Healthy Nights community. So again, many opportunities to make UCF your home and get that smaller campus feel. Now, as far as support resources, our um, mission, of course, is to ensure the academic success of our UCF students. So we do have um, different resources in place for you. So we have our Student Academic Resource Center. They do provide free peer tutoring for some of the most rigorous courses that we have on our campus. We have math labs. We have um, writing labs, and we also have career services. You can connect with them as an incoming student or as a current student, if you're still weighing different career options, they can provide you assessments to see which um, careers are the best fit for you. Or if you're nearing graduation, you can also connect with them and they'll help you with the job search, resumes, cover letters, and even provide mock interviews to our students. Now, as far as the admission process to the university, we definitely encourage you rising seniors to apply as early as possible. For us, that typically means about September to November of that senior year. Now, we are a member of the Common App, so you can definitely apply through there, but we do still have our UCF online application through our website. We do anticipate that both of these will open up August 1st, or let's just say August 2nd, for you to be able to go ahead and start submitting those applications and getting some of those um, documents into us as well. Now, we have implemented the use of what's called the UCF Spark form. It is the self-provided academic record for Knights. So this is where you're going to self-provide your high school course history and grades. And it does eliminate the need to get us a high school so you no longer have to contact your counselors or your high schools requesting that they send official transcripts to us because we will actually only focus on the information that is added onto that SPARC form. It is a mandatory um, application item, so it's not optional. Sometimes students get us a transcript thinking they don't have to submit the SPARC. Unfortunately, you would still have to submit that SPARC to us. Now, we are going to recalculate that GPA as well, so only based upon academic core classes, your English, your math, your science, social science, and modern languages only. And just as the other state universities have, made, have mentioned, we do require official SAT or ACT test scores, but we will super score these if you have the opportunity to take the exams multiple times. So we'll look at the highest score from each of the sections, combine that and give you the greatest possible score. Now the application essay is not a required component, but definitely encouraged just so we can learn more about you beyond the academic credential. Now, as far as what's competitive, we do have our mid ranges to give you a sense of what we typically look for. This does 
or identify the middle 50% of the students that have entered the university as freshmen. So the mid-range GPA is a 3.9 to a 4.4, SAT is a 1250 to 1370, and ACT a 26 to 30. Now these mid-ranges, so we have students that fell below these numbers, and we're still offered admission to the university. So do not get discouraged. These are fall numbers as well. So still apply, get extra information. If you apply for the fall, you get automatic consideration for the summer as well as the following spring. Now we also have our top 10 nights program at UCF, which does guarantee admission to high achieving high school students that meet the qualifications. So for this program, you must be top 10% of your senior class. If the high school does not rank, you look for 3.9 UCF recap beta GPA. You must score a minimum of an 1100 on the SAT or a 21 on the AC team and complete four years of math by the end of high school. To be considered for the program, you must apply to UCF and have all information to us by January 15th of that senior year. So this means your application and fee or application fee waivers, which we also accept, um, your UCF Spark form and your SAT or ACT scores. Our top 10 nights are the only population of applicants that have a guaranteed decision on or before March 1st of the senior year. Now, this program will also guarantee on-campus housing if you apply for housing by May 1st. Now, with the program, it is a guaranteed offer of admission, yes, but it may not be for your desired term. It's going to be for summer, fall, or spring, meaning that if you apply for fall, even as a top 10 night, you might still receive a summer or a spring admission offer. That term is dependent upon the overall strength of your credentials as opposed to your current applicant pool. Now, we also offer merit scholarships at UCF, um, typically by early to mid-December of that senior year. We don't have as much funding remaining for these opportunities, so it's important to, again, apply early and get us all of your information. Our scholarships range anywhere from $6,000 to $30,000 distributed over your four years studying at the university. And lastly, we are open um, for campus tours, so please come visit us um, here in Orlando. You can register on our website. We have tours going, on, going out on a daily basis, and we will be bringing back our open house events. Our first one will be in September. We'll open up that registration on our website in late August. That is it for me. Go Knights. Thank you, Kiana. And we're moving on to Muhlenberg College with Tara Nealon. Hi there, welcome everybody. One of the few from out of state, going from one of the largest institutions in the country to one of the smallest in the country. I am with Muhlenberg College. Many students from Pinellas County explore Muhlenberg because they find that we match what they need in terms of college affordability, scholarships. We are a safe campus with proximity to Philadelphia and New York City. Sometimes they choose to continue to explore or apply to Muhlenberg because of our incredible academics, our faculty's incredible, again, incredible commitment to um, their level of care for the student's growth and development, or even the freedom to explore majors and the help and assistance to decide on one or two majors. Speaking of which, we do not read applications by major. Students do not need to declare a major until sometime in their second year. But for first year students, the most popular majors that they decide on, perhaps in their first year, include business, biology, psychology, theater, and my absolute favorite is undecided. Yes, we have musical theater growing in popularity for our students as computer science and neuroscience, and probably also I'd venture to guess that we will start to see a growth in our public health major. 
During a student's four years on campus at Muhlenberg, our students are engaged in their learning and in their community. They're engaged on campus. They're engaged in Allentown through doing research and volunteering. They will study away also in New York City, DC, or in countries around the globe. Our graduates go on to become change makers, teachers, scientists, business owners, actors, coaches, journalists, attorneys, judges, physicians, entrepreneurs, leaders in their chosen field and productive members of their community and their workplace. Some fast facts about Muhlenberg. We are located in Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is the third largest and the fastest growing city in Pennsylvania with a pretty close to direct flight from Tampa and certainly a direct flight from Sarasota and likely connecting flight from St. Pete. We have been test score optional for over 20 years. All students who choose to apply to Muhlenberg are considered for merit scholarships and honors programs. Um, there's nothing extra that a student needs to do. Students can audition or have their portfolio reviewed for a talent grant in theater, art, music, film studies, and a student doesn't have to major in that in order to keep said scholarship. We do accept the common application. There is no supplemental essay with the Muhlenberg application. We offer admission to more than 50% of the students who choose to apply to Muhlenberg. Um, when we're reading applications, we're looking for the rigorous curriculum, A's and B's in the grades, and character matters, and that's demonstrated through all of the other components of an application. If you're into rankings, you might find us on rankings for best food, best theater, and value for college. In fact, 95% of our class of 2024 is receiving free money, grants, and scholarships. I invite you to visit and explore in person or virtually at muhlenberg.edu backslash visit. Being that you are part of this program with Pinellas County, I would like to leave you with this. Right now you are doing exactly what you should be doing. A tip I will give you is to please, please give yourself the space and the permission to explore a school that you may have never heard of before. Whether you've heard it for the first time at sessions like this or a mailer that comes in the mail or an email to you, go ahead and check out that school. Look for characteristics that are going to be important for you in college. Think about why you want to go to college. Think about what's working for you in your high school experience and look for that in characteristics of these colleges, those that you've heard of, those that you haven't heard of, and as you're choosing to apply to those colleges. Thanks again for being here tonight. Thank you for your great advice, Tara. Next, we have Florida Southern College with Max Gold. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Max Gold. I am here on behalf of Florida Southern College. I am the admissions counselor for the Tampa Bay area, or Champa Bay, as I like to call it. <laughs> um, I represent Pinellas County, Hillsborough, uh, Citrus, Pascal, and Hernando. So we do look at when you uh, apply, you'll be assigned based on your residency. So even if you do go to uh, school within the Pinellas County system, but you reside somewhere else, uh, you might have a different admissions counselor. So a little bit about Florida Southern College. We're located in Lakeland, Florida, a really fast growing metropolis uh, in between Tampa and Orlando, about 45 minutes between each if I4 cooperates, which uh, a lot of you Central Floridians know that doesn't always be the case. We, about, we have about 3,500 students. Uh, we represent uh, about 60% of the students are from Florida and then 40% are out of state or international. We represent almost every state in the US as well as 48 foreign countries. We offer about 70 academic programs, including 16 pre-professional tracks across our five schools. Uh, the schools are business, nursing, exercise science, slash physical therapy, education, liberal arts and sciences, which does include the fine arts like theater and visual arts. Now, Florida, emphasize, uh, Florida Southern really does emphasize engaged learning and hands-on learning. And what I kind of mean by that is that science uh, students who declare becoming a biology, nursing, chemistry, one of those majors, uh, will do 100% first-year research, 
We attend over 250 conferences a year for students and between the business and education, as well as um, we also guarantee three things. Now this kind of branches onto our unique learning and the three guarantees are studying abroad through a journey journey program. Um, students this past year, unfortunately, weren't able to do it, but we are bringing back seniors that elect to do it this year. So we really do guarantee that for all students, regardless of the circumstance. Uh, professional internship, we do believe that work experience is probably the most important thing before you graduate. And as a recent grad, that is definitely the case, definitely having work experience and going into the work field that you're looking to go into definitely helps. So we actually guarantee that work internship uh, to help you gain that work experience. And our third guarantee is graduating on time. We've noticed that the uh, national average graduation rate is five and a half years for a bachelor's degree, but you'll actually be guaranteed the graduation in four years, if not less. We are very transfer credit friendly here. We set, accept almost up to 97 credits coming in, which is almost an equivalent to an associate's degree sometimes for some students. Um, I'll get into a little more of the requirements in a little later, but outside of academics, we have a thriving residential campus life. Uh, you are required to live on campus uh, all four years that you're here. That doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be living in our campus residential halls, which we do have in a lot of different styles, as well as different apartment complexes in a total of 16 residence halls and apartments across the Lakeland and Florida Southern College area. There's a shuttle between the apartments, so you don't have to worry about uh, getting to and from campus and they're all within a mile and we also have shuttles to Publix and different local uh, places around Lakeland as well as you can bring a car your freshman year as well. Um, we have about 125 plus student clubs and organizations anything between an investors club that actually uh, gets funding from the school and they'll actually put uh, they'll actually put investments into real life stock market as well as different um, social clubs like we have a Disney club obviously being so close to Disney we have to have that uh, as well as um, we have a cat club uh, I'm personally more of a dog person but we do have a cat club for students who are interested in cats and they actually take care of some of the street cats around Lakeland which is pretty nice um, so when it comes to our admissions process Florida Southern has adopted the test optional school uh, policy from this past year and will continue doing so this coming year um, while we still do encourage students to submit their test scores, especially if you're um, close to being qualified or if being qualified for Bright Futures, again, we are test optional. We are accepting applications through our website currently, but on Sunday and probably pushing into Monday, um, Common App will open and we're also on the coalition. So we have three different ways that you can apply. We don't really have a preference to what, but we do encourage you to get those applications in as soon as possible. We are rolling uh, admissions here at Florida Southern. So what that means is you can submit your application first. I really do encourage maybe while you still have a couple weeks left before getting back into classes, try to finish up that application, get those essays done, submit the application to us, and then I'll be able to add some more communication to help you through the process of getting your transcripts, uh, letters of rec, um, and other things like that. The requirements to have a completed application here at Florida Southern are completing the application, of course, um, you will need to have a personal statement or essay. Um, all the prompts are you know, listed through the Common App or our website, as well as a letter of recommendation. This past year was optional, but we are now making a requirement. You just need one academic uh, recommendation from a teacher, guidance counselor, uh, maybe a mentor for your school. It does have to be academic though. Um, we do encourage students to submit more than one uh, recommendation, and you can also more than welcome to submit a recommendation that's not through academics. Um, but like I said before, you do need to have an academic rec recommendation. Um, test scores are optional, but when students do submit their test scores, typically um, 23 ACT and 1100 for the SAT and above is what we see our average here at Florida Southern. And then we do weight your GP. Like I said, we are very transfer credit friendly. So we'll take kind of all those credits that you have to offer for us, um, regardless of the major or what you're taking it in. Um, we'll try to accept those and uh, we have a full list too on our website of what credits do transfer and what they'll count for based on your grade and the uh, credit in the AP classes. We weight them based off of the honors classes that you take, AP, ACE, dual enrollment, uh, anything really above an honors class will pretty much weight it towards your GPA. Um, that about does it for me. If you guys have any questions throughout your college search process about Florida Southern, as well as financial aid, 
um, please, please contact me. I'm more than happy to help. Once you have been accepted to Florida Southern, I do become your financial aid counselor as well until you start in the fall. Um, when it does come to financial aid, our financial aid is, uh, everyone is automatically considered for a merit scholarship here at Florida Southern once they've been accepted. Those typically range from about $7,000 a year to $21,000, uh, just depending on your GPA and test scores and your kind of all around uh, application. Um, we do like to take a holistic approach as well with the application, and that also does uh, reflect in towards scholarship money as well. Um, other things that we do reward is based on ta uh, talent rewards like visual arts, athletics, uh, as well as our ROTC program. We also stack outside scholarships. And then for all the Florida residents, we do accept uh, Bright Futures prepaid, as well as every student who has been a Florida resident for more than a year uh, does get the ease grant automatically added on to their financial aid letter. So that about does it again. Please contact me through the Florida Southern website at the admissions uh, basically tab and you just hit meet your counselor and you scroll down and you, you know, punch in your county and then you'll be able to find my information. My phone number is on there. My texting number is on there. I swear I'm not a robot. It is me when I text you um, as well as my Calendly is on there. If you want to schedule uh, a date and time that you want to talk over Zoom or phone. We are all also open for campus visits currently. So if you want to do it virtually, we have that option as well as an information session every Wednesday night, as well as um, this upcoming August 6th, we have a preview day. And then we also have an open house uh, coming up in September. So thank you so much for having me guys. I really appreciate it. Um, and if again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you, Max. Moving on to Johnson & Wales University with Victoria Jeffries. Good evening. My name is Victoria Jeffries, and as it was mentioned, I am one of the admissions representatives for Johnson & Wales University. We are a private four-year institution. I am one of the other universities that is from out of state. Something unique about us is we were founded by two women, Miss Johnson and Miss Wales, hence the name, in 1914. We have two campus locations. So we have a campus that is in Providence, Rhode Island, which is our flagship, and our second campus is in Charlotte, North Carolina. We have about nine thousand students undergraduates between our two campuses our average class sizes is are about uh, 18 students per class we things that we are known for is that we start our students in their major from their first semester if you change your mind it's okay we believe in starting them off early because first of all it gives them more time on task to really perfect that skill in the major that they want or it's going to give them time to actually change their mind and be able to find that thing that they want to do. We are confident of how we structure our students' classes because we're a hands-on learning institution. Our majors are very industry focused. We started as a business school. We've branched out over the years. One thing that we are really renowned for is our culinary arts. We do have the College of Food and Innovation Technology that we're known for. We've produced some of the leading chefs on Food Network. We have culinary um, professionals that will range from food science to innovative product designs with some of the major brands. Within the business world, we've branched into entrepreneurship, a lot of things having to do with entertainment and event management. We do have things in the sciences for public health, physician's assistance, exercise science, and things of that nature. We do have humanities in a sort that we will have things that are in your social sciences, as well as graphic design and some engineering programs. We are a division three school. So we're NCAA, uh, come on, affiliated. So between our two campuses, we do have over 15 varsity sports and 27 teams that are there between the campuses. I feel I'm saying that a lot, that we will have over 100 clubs and organizations to offer our students. We're a semi-residential campus because we require that our students live in our residence halls for the first two years that they are enrolled at Johnson & Wales. Our freshmen are allowed to bring their cars to campus if they do pay for parking permits. We pride ourselves in our experiential learning. We started out that way with Ms. Johnson and Ms. Wales wanting to produce graduates that know how to do the thing that they've studied. All of our students are required to have at least one internship. Our uh, experiential education office does a great job with helping students find meaningful internships as well as bringing over 
1,100 employers to campus every year, even last year virtually, to assure that our students are getting those employment opportunities, those, those interviewing uh, chances and, and the exercise of being able to do that. On to applications. We have always been a test optional university. We do consider all of our applicants for merit based scholarships. We do not require an essay. We do not have an application fee. It isn't that we have overly streamlined our application process, but we feel that we attract a student that really is well fit with Johnson and Wales University. So we try to make it as streamlined as possible. We do offer early action, which is non binding. We ask that those students have those applications in by November the 1st. And we, after November the 1st, we will review applications in batches until March the 1st. After March the 1st, it will be on a rolling basis. We are a university that likes to show what we have to offer between our two very different campuses. Providence is our larger campus, uh, where Charlotte is our smaller campus with about 1,500 students that are located there. Through our website, you are able to not only take self-guided virtual tours, but there are a variety of virtual interactions that you can have, as well as us offering in campus on-campus in-person experiences that you can have with us being in two different states. There is a variety of different uh, health and safety protocols that are in place right now. Our website's gonna have all the information that's on there. I will put my information in the chat so you can contact me as one of the admissions reps to answer your questions, or I'm sure that the panel will be able to provide a way to contact me. I look forward to interacting with you, and I hope that Johnson & Wales is a place that you will consider. Thank you very much for your time. our um, viewers that the chat is open and um, after this last presentation we will open it up for the Q&A session. So last we have University of Florida with Anant Whalen. Good evening everyone. My name is Anant Whalen. I'm the admissions officer for the University of Florida, actually for the county just north of you. I represent Pasco County. I am uh, sitting in for my colleague Richard Barrett. Uh, this evening, he is uh, your admissions representative and all of his uh, information is available on our website. Uh, but if you need to, feel free to reach out to me after this presentation. Uh, so the University of Florida is the state's oldest university. We're also the largest in terms of program offerings. We're no longer the largest in terms of student population, but we're still a large university. We have about 55,000 undergraduate, uh, so undergraduate and postgraduate students, as well as professional students. So we have a variety of programs available here on campus. We have 120 undergraduate majors uh, that are spread out over 16 schools and colleges. Uh, we also have over 200 graduate programs and we have all five professional schools on campus. So we have a college of medicine, veterinary medicine, dentistry, law, as well as pharmacy. We're the only university in the state of Florida, that's all five, and we're the only one that has the veterinary medicine program. So it is a really good option for undergraduate students to consider their goals long term. Uh, you can start at UF as an undergraduate student, go into a graduate program, uh, and then continue on into a professional program if that is your choice. Our uh, admissions uh, is not on a rolling basis for freshmen. Uh, we do have one application deadline. So uh, we do accept both the common application as well as the coalition application. You can fill out either one. The application opens usually in the last week of August. Uh, our priority deadline for applications is November 1st. So you must submit your application by November 1st. And then we require you to submit the SSAR, which is the student self-reported academic record by December 1st. Uh, this is what we use instead of a transcript. We do not require any letters of recommendation at all. We don't read them. Uh, we usually get about 50 to 55,000 applications. So it's not possible for us to read all the letters of recommendation. So we don't ask for them. Uh, and we are not test optional like all the other state universities. So we do require the SAT or the ACT and we do super score. So going back to uh, the application itself, we do a holistic review. So which means that we're gonna look at your academic record as well as your non-academic record. Our middle 50% uh, of our admitted class for the 2020 year was uh, the GPA, the weighted GPA was between a 4.4 and a 4.6. The ACT was between a 30 and a 33. And the SAT was between a 1320 and a 1460. 
Um, but this is the middle 50% of our admitted class. This is uh, the 2020 class. Uh, so a uh, class that was admitted in the 2020 uh, admission cycle. I don't have this year's numbers, but I believe we went up slightly despite COVID. Uh, we did require students to submit uh, test scores and we ended up with more applications than we have ever had before. Um, the University of Florida offers students a number of different opportunities that maybe other schools don't. We are a research one institution. We're also division one as far as sports is concerned. We are more than just, you know, a football school. Uh, we do, uh, we are the home of the Gator Nation, but we do other things as well. We encourage students to participate in research. Uh, since we have a dental school, veterinary medicine school, and uh, medical school on campus, we do encourage students to start volunteering early if they want to go to med school. We have over a thousand clubs on campus. We have everything from uh, Irish dancing to various religious clubs. We have skydiving. We also have a hammock club for kids that want to just chill out. Uh, my favorite part of being on a university campus is the access to our lovely libraries. Our li some of our libraries are open 24 seven. Uh, so we do have a lot of students that practically live in the libraries. Uh, you will find students, you know, late at night, they're going to the library, studying, they're outside, they're eating, and they're going back to study. So it is, uh, even though we are a very large university, it still feels like a small university town. Gainesville basically rotates around the University of Florida. We're located about two hours north of Tampa, um, about an hour and a half from Jacksonville, about two hours from uh, Tallahassee. Uh, we do not encourage students to bring cars to campus. Uh, living on campus is optional, but we do encourage students to live on campus, at least during their freshman year. Uh, Gainesville has a lot of facilities geared towards uh, students and student activities. Uh, our Dean of Students office really supports students. We have a uh, UMATA We Care Center, so we have uh, counseling available, uh, you know, crisis counseling available to students. We have an infirmary on campus. Everything that you need is here. Uh, our Career Resource Center helps students early on. So they do mock interviews. They do, uh, they will, uh, you know, critique your resumes. Uh, we also have something called the Gator Closet. So if you need to uh, go to an interview, uh, we do not want you to have to incur extra costs to get professional clothing. So we do let uh, really good clothes to students so that they can you know get a step up that way uh, it does matter and we have a lot of other support on campus uh, we have uh, food pantries that students can go to not only students actually staff can go to as well or anyone with a gate on one card can go and get free food from our campus pantries uh, there is a lot for students to do here. It is up to you what you want to do. We do not admit students based on the major on their application. I encourage students not to put a major at all because sometimes that'll uh, you know, preclude you from admission into certain programs. Uh, so, and we also do not look at residency and we do not look at alumni ties when we are admitting students. Uh, like I said before, we do a holistic review. So everything that you put on your application itself is going to be uh, reviewed by a team of admissions officers. We are looking at your extracurricular activities, honors and awards, uh, community service, and you have to fill out all the sections on the application. Your personal essay is really, really important. And believe it or not, we read each and every essay at least two times, if not three times. So it is a lot of fun for us. And uh, personally, I love reading essays that make me either laugh, cry, or just scream. You know, if you're challenging me, that's good. Uh, we want students for all our different majors. So we're not just recruiting biologists or engineers. We have you know, a college of the arts. We have dancers, we have philosophers, we have historians, and we even have geographers. I am a geography major and I do encourage students to explore our geography major here on campus. And I know we're running out of time, so I am gonna cut this short. Uh, we do have campus tours available uh, three times a week at the moment, but they will open up. And we also have several uh, virtual sessions, uh, possibly 
that are going to continue over the fall semester. So I encourage you to have a look at our website. The admissions website has all the information that you need. And our admissions officer, Richard Barrett, who represents your county, is definitely going to be visiting all your schools. Thank you and go Gators. Thank you, Anand. And um, with that, we conclude the presentation piece of um, this event. We will now move on to the Q&A. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone because you did an exceptional job with overviewing a lot of the information that some of the questions that our students had um, provided us questions initially because we do a summer session with our Elevating Excellence students. And we asked them to provide us questions so that we could bring them out and have you guys answer them. So a lot of those questions were answered. We have the live chat, so we are going to go to the live chat question, and then I'm going to move on to the questions that our students supplied earlier today, and I will have everyone answer them, so we will go in the same order that we presented, and just a brief, a brief answer to the question. Um, they're pretty straightforward, but I know they're waiting to hear their answers, so um, we're going to start with the Santos. All right, so one of the questions in the chat was actually for USF specific, and they asked, what is your average GPA? So um, the average GPA for the fall um, 2020, we don't have the fall 2021 numbers yet, but you're still actually admitting those students, it was between a 4.1 and a 4.4. So that was the fall um, average. It's basically the fall middle 50%. Um, so we met about one fourth of our students above that point and one fourth of our su students below that point. And that's also based on the weighted recalculated GPA. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to move on to a question that came directly from one of our students. Since we um, expressed the importance of the FAFSA, completing the FAFSA, they are asking, do you have to fill out the FAFSA to receive financial aid? any financial aid from your institution. So we're gonna start with Eckerd. Um, yes, so at Eckerd, um, if you don't fill out the FAFSA, the only aid that you'll automatically be considered for is academic aid. Um, so we define financial aid as any need-based aid. So in order to receive that, we do have to have that FAFSA. It'll um, allow us to determine if you're eligible for uh, federal funding, federal student loans, federal grants, but we also use it to determine the Eckerd College Grant, which is additional funding provided by the college based on your family's financial need. Thank you. USF? Um, yes. Do, um, do you give it students that don't think that they are going to meet the requirements for federal aid, I do encourage them to fill out the FAFSA because it also um, has other options for other scholarships that do require the FAFSA. So I always encourage students to fill out the FAFSA out regardless of whether or not they think they are going to be eligible for federal aid. Vanderbilt? Yes, you need to fill out the FAFSA and we also actually require the CSS profile as well. Thank you. New College? Yes, we do encourage you to complete the FAFSA um, for any loans or grants you might receive um, in addition to our scholarships. FAMU? Yes, you will have to complete the application. Um, and just like a lot of the other um, schools have already stated, especially when it comes to those need-based scholarships, we will require for you to fill that out. And there are other benefits as such as scholarships. And of course, if you're interested in work study, you will have to have filled that out as well. Thank you. West Florida? Hey there. Um, yes, you will need to complete the, uh, the application and you will also need to have that done um, in order to um, qualify for um, an academic merit scholarship. UCF? The FAFSA is not required for the merit-based scholarships that are offered from undergraduate admissions. However, we do strongly encourage students to go ahead and submit that FAFSA for need-based aid that they may qualify for, as well as federal or institutional aid. Muhlenberg College? The pre-application for federal student aid is not required for merit scholarships or talent grants. It is required for all other sources of aid, along with our own institutional document. And our, my colleagues in the financial aid office can assist in helping families complete the forms. Florida Southern. Yes, it is required for any federal, uh, state aid, that sort of thing. Uh, when it comes to the academic merit aid, it is not required. Um, also, I do want to throw out, and one of the counselors can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the FAFSA does open up in October. So just to keep that date in mind as well. Thank you. Justin Wales? 
Max, that is a very good point that you do need to have your paperwork ready to be able to file that. I agree with all the other schools. Uh, the FAFSA is strictly for federal aid and need-based aid for parents. Things for you to keep in mind is every year that you plan on attending a credit-bearing school, you need to complete a new FAFSA for that school year. It is not a one and done. So it's something that you will have to do every year that you're on if you want need-based aid. University of Florida? Uh, yes, we need students to fill out the FAFSA for all federal aid and other aid. Uh, for merit scholarships, you will automatically get considered. Uh, the FAFSA opens usually October 1st, and uh, we need it to be submitted by December 15th. And the sooner you fill your FAFSA, the better your aid package is going to be. Our student financial aid website has a lot of information for students. We also have a scholarship search engine, so you might want to start exploring those scholarships as well. Thank you for that information. Um, the other question that I know um, UF answered at the end, but I'm gonna ask everyone because one of our sessions is on college essay. And so the students were really concerned, are they gonna read my essay? So that was one of their big questions. So I'm gonna go ahead around and around. So we start with Eckerd. Yeah, so I definitely, and same with all of my other colleagues in the office, we read your essay very closely. Um, it, is the one place in the application where we really get to hear your voice. Everybody's gonna have activities, a transcript, letters of rec, that kind of thing. So getting to hear from you um, is really important because we do like to get to know you as a person rather than just your numbers. Um, so I always encourage students to write about something that's personal to them, something they're passionate about. And at Eckerd, we're really looking to see that you're ready for college level writing um, and then get to, to get to know you, like I said. Thank you. USF? Um, no, we do not require essays, um, letters of recommendation, or academic um, uh, resumes. I'm not sure how some of the bigger schools do that, but there <laughs> is no way we'd be able to read um, uh, just all those essays that would come in. So yeah, we do not require them. Thank you. Vanderbilt? Yeah, we do require um, the essay that's on the Common App, Coalition App, things like that, and we definitely read them. I know that's my favorite part of the application, and I always go there first whenever I open up a file. Um, and then we also have something that's called a supplemental essay, although I say essay, it's much shorter. It's more like a short answer question, and it's just basically expand on one of your extracurriculars um, just so we can know a little bit more about what kind of clubs or organizations you're really passionate about. Um, the one piece of advice I would give there is just try to write about something different than what you write about on your personal essay to kind of give a wide breadth of topics there. New college? Uh, we didn't require it last year, but we will be requiring it um, this year because um, we, we are able to read uh, all of those um, essays and they are important. We'd like to see um, your style of writing. We'd like to see um, your just your design and how you put together um, you know, paragraphs and, and ideas. Thank you. FAMU? Um, yes, there is a requirement, as I stated before, for a 500-word essay, and we do read them um, for a lot of the other reasons that my colleagues stated already. We want to see your writing level, um, but not only that, we want to see the individual person. We want to know who you are as an individual, and we do encourage you to write about something personal, write about yourself, um, write about your aspirations, your goals, and things of that nature. And something with um, FAMU, if you kind of look at the requirements for a number of other public HBCUs, you will find out that we have like the highest standards amongst public HBCUs as far as the requirements go to get in. Um, so that essay is really, really helpful for those students that don't necessarily meet our requirements initially when it comes to the 3.0 GPA or that SAT and ACT scores. So you can really stand out and get those additional points if you go up for review um, with your essay because that's what's gonna show us that you're really ready and you're capable. So um, a lot of people feel like, you know, the essays don't matter. I'm just gonna play around with this because of course they're not gonna read all of these hundreds and thousands of essays, but we are gonna read them. Um, and you know, it's gonna, it could be the, what determines if you get in. So just keep that in mind. University of West Florida. We do not require um, a personal essay or letters of rec or um, a list of extracurriculars. Um, just the um, application requirements are gonna be your fee, your um, test scores and your high school transcript. Thank you, UCF. The application essay is not a required component, but it is definitely encouraged 
just so we can learn more about you beyond those academic credentials. Um, the essay does have to be submitted as part of the application itself. Um, on occasion, we might get those students that want to rush through the application, have that submitted, get off of the mental to-do list, and then work on the essay and send it to us after the fact. Unfortunately, it will not be added to the application or considered after submission. Thank you. Muhlenberg College? Yes, it's, that's often a very popular question for students looking to um, apply to college, mostly because that's the essay is the component where you, the student, have the most control over of that component of the application. Your academics, your address, your high school, all of that is already set, but your essay is what you have the most control over. So I understand the questions and the anxiety surrounding it. Um, at Muhlenberg, we accept the common application essay as part of the application. We do read it at least twice, sometimes more. And to summarize what everybody is saying, what we are looking for is your story in your voice and let us learn something new about you that we can't otherwise capture from your application. Thank you. Florida Southern? Yes, so we do require it. Um, we really take it into consideration um, as the kind of the whole application. We really want to see who you are. Um, I'm always here to answer any questions about what maybe would make a good college essay, what I'm kind of looking for specifically. I'm happy to answer any questions, uh, you know, through a Zoom call or a phone call at any time. So definitely reach out and I'll, I'll definitely help you out on that. Thank you. Johnson and Wales? We do not require an essay as part of a complete application. There are some students that we would recommend that they submit a purpose statement, which basically we ask them to outline why they feel Johnson and Wales would be the best academic and pre-professional fit for them. But an essay is not part of what we require for every student. Thank you. And I know UF already answered the question in terms of the um, uh, essay, but go ahead if you want to reiterate. Sure. Uh, yes, I do want to add to that. Uh, so we do require one essay for all applicants. Uh, then we have additional essays for, on, for our honors program as well as for our innovation academy. Uh, we are looking for students that are thinking for themselves, that are challenging uh, others' views perhaps. Uh, we, we want students who are out there doing what they are passionate about. Uh, we, since we're recruiting all kinds of students, uh, we, uh, we welcome all kinds of viewpoints. All essays are read by at least two admissions officers, if not three. Uh, so we do take that part really seriously. And I also wanted to explain that we do an academic review and a non-academic review separately. So your non-academic uh, review, which is going to be your application itself, is reviewed by other people. We don't know where you're coming from because we don't see your name. We don't see what school you're going to. We don't see where you live. So that part is separate, and then your academic review is done by two other people, and then all the scores are combined. So it is a very fair process, and if uh, we find that there are discrepancies, then it's always referred to either an, another group of people or uh, to an, a, an assistant or associate director. So you know it's a very long process, and we uh, release all our decisions at one time, which is going to be the last Friday of February. We don't have any early decisions. Thank you. Um, we have one last question for the uh, panelists this evening, and it also comes from one of our summer sessions. We did an SAT prep for our students, and students want to know, do SA higher SAT scores guarantee or ensure a freshman scholarship to your university? And so we're going to do this a rapid fire, so a quick yes or no um, would be great. So we're going to start with Eckerd. No, it doesn't. It's a combination. Uh, Yes, Same sir. as Eckerd, it is a combination of the GPA and the SAT or ACT. Scores. Okay, Vanderbilt? Yeah, no, it doesn't ensure. We kind of look at the whole application. New College of Florida. Um, we do have the holistic review, um, so it really depends on all parts of the application. Damn you? No, it's not going to guarantee we look at the entire application. University of West Florida? Um, it does not guarantee um, we look at the GPA as well as the overall test scores. Central Florida? It does not. We're also looking at both GPA and those test scores. 
Muhlenberg College. We read applications holistically and all applicants, whether they submit test scores or not, are considered for scholarships. Florida Southern. Yep, same, same here. We uh, look at it holistically and then the GPA and the test scores will be more so for the merit scholarships. Johnson and Wales. No, it does not guarantee higher scholarships because we do consider different national student organization participation levels as part of our merit scholarship review for certain students. NUF. Uh, so uh, we don't uh, admit students based on any specific numbers. So it's going to be GPA, rigor of your academic schedule, your test scores. Uh, some students do really well academically and are not admitted to UF because we're also looking at the non-academic records. So it's a combination of uh, many different factors. We also look at whether you're a first generation college student, whether you're from a household where English is not the first language. So it's, it's a lot of different things that we take into consideration. And we really like to understand the context of the applicant. So we want to know more about the student. And, and we take a lot of different things into consideration before we uh, release any scholarship decisions. Thank you, each and every one of you. Um, on behalf of the Elevating Excellence Initiative, I thank you for being here with us tonight. I know our students and our families really appreciate your participation. Again, we will, um, for everybody that's watching us, we will post the contact information for our panelists tonight. And again, on behalf of us, thank you very much, Ms. Valerie Santos. And also, this will be, you'll be able to view the whole entire um, presentation. I hope it was helpful to you. Students, as you embark on this college going process, I hope that you reach out to your school counselors and use them as your resource because they're there for you and they want to help you through this process. Uh, thank you very much and have a great evening. Have a great evening.